Dude, you gotta go do the Mr. Rodriguez show. Oh, Hurry up! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I am Mr. Rodriguez, your art teacher, the gracious host of the Mr. Rodriguez Show. Thank you for tuning in. So fifth grade, what we're gonna do is we are gonna actually kind of stick with this line kind of thing that we were dealing with, with contour line drawing, blind contour modified. What we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of move it into a different approach here. I want you to think about all the years that you spent here in the art room. I want you to think about all the self portraits that you've done. Now we dealt with a lot of different things when it came to it. Uh, facial proportions, where the eyes are located, where the nose is located, where the mouth is located. We're gonna kinda move away from that because we're gonna go at a different approach to a self-portrait here. But before we get too far, we're gonna talk about cartoons. So my question to you is what is a cartoon. Like, there's a lot of ways you can define a cartoon, but what exactly is a cartoon? I know from my personal experience, cartoons, when I think of that word, I think of an animated series with two-dimensional characters that were hand-drawn and it was animated that way. Now, cartoons are completely different than what they were when I was a kid. A lot of it is three-dimensional characters and stuff like that. My son watches PJ Masks, Paw Patrol, Super Wings, stuff like that with three-dimensional characters. Now, when I was younger, when I was watching cartoons, I watched Bugs Bunny. I watched Daffy Duck, Darkwing Duck, The Adventures of Batman, you know. The cartoons like that with these 2D drawn figures. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of talk about cartoons for a little bit before we finally get on to our first project. So, cartoons go way back. And you have to kind of take what you think your definition of cartoon is and kind of just throw it out the window there. Because if you go back a long, 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 long time to 3000 BC, the burnt city in Iran, you have this strip right here of just a sequence of images. It looks like it is an animal jumping across um, an area. And so, Back then, you gotta think, okay, there's a sequence of images that's creating this movement. Hey, that's basically what cartoons are. Back then, it was a much more primitive uh, viewpoint of it. As time progressed, things got slightly more advanced. Shadow play came into existence uh, over in Asia. And shadow play was where you had, you know, basically a curtain and you were projecting these shadows onto the curtain from a light behind you. Somewhat a sense of a cartoon right there. Eventually things worked their way into uh, what would essentially become a flip book. A flip book is basically um, paper, thick paper that you draw an image in every, say you're drawing a cat yawning you know, this first image is a cat with his mouth closed. Second image, it's slightly open. Third, more, 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 more. And then when you flip the paper, it looks like the cat's actually yawning. What is interesting though is the animation, the, the cartoons that we know um, are really still uh, young. They've only been around for just over I, I mean, what we know as cartoons and animation has only been around a little over a hundred years. Contemporary animation, using a frame-by-frame -frame process and transferring it onto film, was first notably uh, depicted in 1908's Emil Cole's Phantasmagory. This was basically just... <laughs> Uh, line drawing stick figures moving around and you got to think for not ever seeing something like that before this had to be mind-blowing to see to see moving lines on a screen that were not human <laughs> like this is 
you gotta you gotta erase everything you know about cartoons and just uh, try to think back to that, you know. Contemporary animation continued on in 1914 with Gertie the Dinosaur. And this was the first time a character, uh, this, was, this was the first time a character and its journey was showcased in a cartoon. You followed the journey of Gertie the Dinosaur. Move on to 1919, Felix the Cat was released. And Felix the Cat, which went on to be one of the most famous characters in all history, this was the first time you had a reoccurring character in multiple cartoons. It was in 1928 when things kind of changed for animation and cartoons because in 1928, a movie called Steamboat Willie came out. And Steamboat Willie, not only introduced somebody you might have heard of before, his name's Mickey Mouse. I don't know, they built like a theme park around him. Um, but Steamboat Willie was important because it introduced synchronized sound. And before that, before that, all you had was these orchestral like band music playing um, on top of what you were watching and they probably didn't sync up that well they probably had no notable presence um but seriously steamboat willie like they added synchronized sound so if there was a clap there was a sound of that you know the on on the steamboat you hear the the steamboat going and uh, you hear the sounds that go along with it the tap taps and all the, and all the musical numbers and stuff like that. Steamboat Willie was pretty big deal back then. It although you know may seem a little primitive now, it was a huge feat for cartoons. As cartoons progressed, you started to get more notable characters. Popeye in 1933, Casper the Friendly Ghost in 1945. Also in 1933, you were introduced to a cast of characters uh, that went by the Looney Tunes. In 1937, we had the first full-length movie, Snow White and the Seven Doors. Now, now you gotta think. These cartoons, they take a lot to produce. So they were maybe not that long, probably most know, I know a lot of the cartoons that I used to watch when I was a kid, Looney Tunes, a cartoon is maybe like five, six minutes. And so you got to think to make a full length movie, which I want to say is just over 70 minutes is considered a film. Snow White and the Seven Doors probably took a lot to produce. Uh, you think music, you think dialogue, you think sound. Took a bit. But once Disney put out Snow White, it was... Disney ended up ruling the world, and they still do, because they have Star Wars, but that's... So you had Disney that worked its way up through the two-dimensional uh, animation all the way up to, well, 3D animation, like I just said earlier in the show with Toy Story. But these movies, they, 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 they progressed over time as far as technology and animation. In the essence, what it came down to was characters. These characters from cartoons are timeless. And I think about the, the characters through my childhood. Uh, like I just said, Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to Batman because The Adventures of Batman was one of my favorite cartoons when I was a kid. Um, you know, uh, I was a big fan of Goofy uh, from the Goofy movie. Uh, Buzz Lightyear, Woody, all these characters are timeless. And when you think about it, they don't look that realistic. Here's Mickey Mouse, okay? Mickey Mouse is one of the most timeless characters of all time, probably the most recognizable cartoon ever. Mickey Mouse, let's say we were to take an actual mouse, a real life mouse, put him in some shorts, put him in some shoes, put some white gloves on him. Probably looks a little weird, right? <laughs> 
they kind of, yeah, you kind of had to change it up because a lot of cartoons are geared towards people your age and younger, and you want them to look family friendly. And so what they do is they embellish these features about Mickey Mouse. They gave him a big nose, big eyes. They gave him big, big ears. They, you know, he's walking around in his shoes and his shorts, um, talking in a really high pitched voice. They made him marketable like that. Cartoon characters have distinguishable features. One, in, one embellished features like big eyes, big mouths, big nose. Um, one thing you also notice with cartoons, is they also have one less number of fingers. That means they have three fingers and a thumb. I don't know why. And the features are not what's called anatomically correct. Our nose, our eyes, our mouth, they are bigger or smaller than usual. Right here we have the parents from the, uh, Tommy Pickle in uh, the Rugrats show. Uh, another one that I used to watch when I was a kid. Uh, we see embellished features here. Big eyes, big nose, big feet, big goofy hair. Also, one thing that I've noticed, one thing you notice with cartoons is that anybody that wears glasses doesn't have any eyelids. So you see glasses with a white space and a dot for the pupil. And that's pretty much how you wear glasses in the cartoon world. Next we have, like I said, I told you, one of my favorite cartoons when I was a kid, The Adventures of Batman. So here we have the Joker. The Joker is a perfect example of this because big sharp teeth, big long jaw, big nose, big eyes, big glaring eyes right here. Good embellished features. So what you're going to do is you are going to draw yourself as a cartoon. You're going to do a cartoon self-portrait. You're going to make you be the center of the composition. That means you're going to be centered in your paper, portrait, stern them up. Your head's going to probably be the biggest thing on the paper behind you. You are going to put yourself in a background that has to do with you, your favorite place, your, you know, maybe you're really into like football, so you have a football field behind you. I also want to see five supporting things about you. And I'll show this in my example. And I have a couple examples from previous uh, students to show you. Your, um, your behind you, five different things. So if you're into football, I should see a football behind you. If you like playing music, I should see an instrument behind you. If you're really into PlayStation, I should see a PlayStation behind you. So let's take a look at these examples. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get you started. Basically, I'm gonna get you started and then you're gonna kind of go on by yourself here. All right, right here is an example of a student work right here from last year. You can see she put herself in a background. She has supporting things behind her, a uh, big head, um, features that aren't anatomically correct. And hey, there's that rule of the glasses. If she's got glasses on, she doesn't have any eyelids. So all we see is this white space and a pupil. Here's another example. Uh, this one has a little more clear background here still. She followed the objective. She has five supporting things about her. She likes art, she likes sports, she likes music, books. Uh, she put herself in a room, which is a background. Perfect. Right here I have the example. Uh, this is my personal example right here. Again, I'm centered in the uh, middle of the paper. Behind me I have Supporting things about me, a Batman poster, a guitar, a Beatles record, a record player, chicken. Um, I also have a, outside a window, you can see that I have sand dunes out into Lake Michigan right there. Because Lake Michigan is one of my favorite places. These are all things that support me. Again, embellished features, stuff like that. So what you're going to do is you are going to draw me a cartoon self-portrait. You're going to start off in pencil. In the center of your paper, you are going to draw your head, basically. You don't want your head to be about that big right there, okay? Can you see that? 
Everything else, your body's gonna go below here. So we're not gonna see a lot of the background behind you, which is okay. Primarily, I want the cartoon self-portrait to be your main thing, the main focus of your composition. You're gonna draw it in pencil. Then you're gonna take a black marker or a Sharpie and you're gonna trace everything that you just drew. That means lines in your cartoon self-portrait and the background. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna color it nice and neat, everything on the paper in marker. Nice and neat again. Here's my example again. Everything is colored. Now, obviously some things are white, you don't have to color. But I want to see if you have a wood floor, I want to see it colored. If you have a football field, I want to see it colored. If you have a road behind you, I want to see it colored. If you have a blue sky, better color it. So, I cannot wait to see these. So far, what we've done in the class is turning out awesome. So I can't wait to see everybody's once they're all done. Remember, all artwork is due by the end of the quarter. So please make sure you save it with your name on it, hand it in. You can hand it in any time before the end of the quarter, or you can hand it in all together. Remember, sign the exit ticket because that is your participation. Art is required, just like music, just like gym, just like technology, it is all required. So please make sure you sign that exit ticket so I know you are participating. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see these. Thank you for tuning in to the Mr. Rodriguez Show. I just dropped my pencil.